We're making chili peanut rice. That's just a ton of ghee. Oh, yeah. So you should s smell it. It smells really nice. I love smelling ghee. And let's pick it up with the transition. Oh, shit. Oh. <laughs> and it's good for your skin, right? I, I feel like it's great for your skin. Yeah, yeah there you go. Like, dry. Like, yeah. My hands oh, are really dry. dry spot. I need to see the little ghee. There we go. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Not bad. I, I just it. smell like yeah. popcorn. Today we were making chili peanut rice, um, which is basically, you know, it was a dish born of leftovers. It reminds me a lot of fried rice in Chinese cuisine, which is basically taking advantage of leftover rice that you've got in the fridge, plus whatever vegetables and produce and spices, and just mixing it all together and frying it in a pan. We're basically doing the same thing, just with basmati rice and with Indian ingredients. I also love that this dish has two layers of ghee. So it's like as if like a quarter cup of ghee wasn't enough. Well, let's add another quarter cup of ghee. We've got an onion <laughs> and we're going to cut it into thin strips. <laughs> when I was little, um, like when I still believed in Santa Claus, um, my parents, uh, we had these neighbors. Um, uh, our, her, her name was Helen Mary and she had, I forget what her husband's name was, but um, every year for Christmas they used to buy our Christmas presents and then drop them off at Helen Mary's place and she would wrap all the gifts for us and then leave them under our tree. And Helen Mary loved baking cookies and her husband smoked a pipe. So they would wrap all of these cookies, or wrap all of these presents and then sneak them under the tree and in the morning I would smell them and they smelled like Christmas cookies and a pipe. And like you imagine that's like exactly what the North Pole must smell like. And so I believed in Santa Claus for so much longer because of just that very distinct smell. And my sister like definitely did not smell, like she did not smell the gifts, but like I could smell that smell of cookies and a pipe from a mile away. And I was just like, my parents don't make cookies. They don't smoke a pipe. Like there is no other explanation other than Santa exists. So these are good. Um, and then we're gonna cut our chili. There's very minimal chopping in this recipe. Uh, so the other thing we're slicing is two serranos. Um, either this or those long slender Thai chilies you get from stores work perfectly. Um, so what my mom loves to do is just slit them even with the stem on and everything. This um, will prevent them from popping and getting seeds in your eyes in the pan. And it just looks really pretty having this beautiful fanned out chili and the rice and it adds just the right amount of heat without kind of overwhelming you and you can use again you can use one chili you can use no chilies but like yeah, like we we can have chilies let's let's have more green chilies in our lives guys all right so step one of sort of building our wonderful chili peanut rice flavor is going to be adding lime and salt to the rice so a quick note on the rice we've got long grain basmati rice and it's a day old i like long grain basmati rice because it's got body, it's got texture, it's got a nice chew to it. This is the rice that sort of belongs with Indian flavors. And I like the day old rice because it gets a little bit crispier, it's a little drier. Um, we'll have sort of like clumps that, you know, get, uh, it sort of absorbs flavor a little bit better. I mean, all the reasons why fried rice tastes good with leftover rice, like this is why you use leftover rice for chili peanut rice. Now we're going to lime up our rice. So this is like, think of this, as like layer one of flavor. I, again, I like things super limey. Um, just remember we're adding like a lot of ghee and nutty flavors. So you want this to be pretty, like pretty bright tasting. This is sort of our acidic layer before we're adding our next things. Got a little salt. And we're just gonna mix this together. And that's the recipe. Just <laughs> but I mean, I'm sure this tastes really good. Um, all right, so we're gonna let that sit now. We're gonna go over to the pan and make our, I was thinking about what to call this. I think this is kind of like a reverse chonk because instead of finishing the dish with chonk, we're starting the dish with chonk. So we're gonna make a mustard seed, curry leaf, and peanut chonk, throw it in, cook our onions, chilies, throw them in, and then we'll be done. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So on medium heat, we're gonna melt some ghee. This is a quarter cup. Um, ooh, I just love the way that ghee looks. I love the way it smells. Ghee is great. All right. Mm. So the reason that we're doing the chonk 
like sort or doing this chunk first and not finishing it is because we don't really we don't need it to just be like a topper. We want this to be fully mixed in and incorporated with the rice. This is sort of the main flavoring. So the first thing we've got is mustard seeds. These are really earthy. And then we've got curry leaves, which are also earthy, but add sort of an herbaceous element. And I love this combination because it's really crunchy. And then once you add the peanuts, it'll be extra crunchy. Now we're gonna add our mustard seeds. And basically you're waiting for them to pop and sputter. Do not be alarmed once this happens. It's totally fine. You kind of just want to hear some crackling some mild fireworks, but know that mild fireworks are okay. You're doing it right. Mustard seeds burn pretty easily. So my mom cooks mustard seeds on high heat because she's a maniac. I cook them on medium heat and it takes a little more time, but you're sort of preventing yourself from burning. Hear that? Yep. Getting there. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Off the heat and You've seen this before. And now the curry leaves get nice and crisp. So see how these, I'm not gonna eat one, but like see how these have gotten almost like potato chip-like? That's exactly what you're looking for. I'm gonna take one out to show the camera, but then I will put it back in. But uh, ooh, here's what you're looking for, see? Got a nice little crispity crunchy piece. So now we're gonna put it back on the heat on medium low. Um, all right, and we're gonna throw in our peanuts. Um, you just want unsalted shelled peanuts. Do not get salted ones. And we're just gonna cook these for a few minutes until the peanuts start emitting a fragrance and getting a little brown. What makes this dish so beautiful is you're maintaining like the full leaves and the integrity of the curry leaves. So be careful. Mmm, they're starting to smell peanutty. Ooh. A thing that I feel like people don't know that about Indian cuisine is that peanuts sort of feature very heavily in a lot of savory preparations. Peanuts are, you know, peanuts are wonderful. I didn't even know that peanut allergies were a thing growing up because they were just such a ubiquitous part of our childhood. I like using fresh curry leaves. You can use dry curry leaves if you want, but I think just fresh is the best. That's how you get this beautiful glossiness, how they taste a little bit fresher, a little bit more bright and herby in the dish. But, you know, I have Amazon primed dried curry leaves when my kukubua was coming to town and needed to, I needed to make ducky toast and I didn't have time to go to Bluestones. We all do. Yeah. Oh, some more words. Um, well, you, we, I do, we just learned, there isn't really a word for peanut. Yeah, it's just peanut. <laughs> The word for tomato in Hindi is damater. <laughs> it's like basically just Easy tomato. For me. Yeah. Um, so you're saying we might know more words than we know? Probably. The word for computer in Hindi is computer. Oh, cool. <laughs> there we go. Cool. Um, all right, these are ready. So here's what they're supposed to look like. Got some brownness. We can smell the peanutty fragrance. Our curry leaves are nice and crisp. We've tried to not break them apart, but we can't all be perfect. So they've kind of broken apart and it's totally fine. All right. And then just toss that, boom. Oh yeah. Molly, we're making chili peanut rice. I know, that's my favorite. Is it done? Uh, no, not yet. Almost. Okay, let me know what it is. Okay. It looks like fine. All right, so in the same pan that you just used, no need to wipe it out or anything, although I will get that last peanut. And we're kind of gonna do it all over again. Back on the pan heat. Back on the heat. <laughs> and now it's sort of like deja vu. We've got a quarter cup of ghee again. Um, and you know, if you like things less rich, feel free to use less ghee. I feel like I have to say that, but like, come on, use the full half cup of ghee. Like, especially cause this is party food. So my mom, like when my mom's cooking for a party, she's just like always want to adding a little, just a little more ghee. It kind of is like a fail safe. Like it sort of ensures that the food will taste good. You know, then we're going to add our onions. I did a pretty good job thinly slicing these strips. Look mom. Uh, and then we're gonna add our slit chili, which as you'll notice, like because we slit it, it's not going to pop. You're not going to get seeds in the face. Um, and we're just gonna cook these until they're translucent. Have you all ever, are you all able to do this thing? Uh, we just did a Rick video where he did two at a time to show up. 
What? See, that is not. Here. Hey, Rhoda, do you know how to do the flippy thing in the pan? When you can, how? like, when you flip it? Can I do it? Can you show me how? Oh, sure. Yeah. It's actually nice to practice with, like, dry cereal or mm -hmm. something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my Whoa. god! <laughs> it's kind of, you kind of have to like, so you like kind of, jolt it. You're like pushing it to the back rim and then it kind of flips back onto itself. Okay. Because you, what you're trying to do is get it to like flip over, you know? Oh my god. Now I'm just, my hand has gotten really clammy. You can also put a towel around it if you want. Let's try. Alright. And Rick did this two at a time? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I feel good about those two flips. Tommy's back. back. Are you gonna rewrite the clicker? Why should I rewrite the? <laughs> You've What's been this? usurped. Just pour them on in, key and all. Oh boy. We don't even need to <laughs> abide by formalities. So Molly Can made this for BA Cookbook oh. Club and it was the most popular dish. I honestly feel like that's just because I probably seasoned my food more aggressively than anyone else in the club. And so everyone was like, whoa, that's so good. And it probably just had like a lot of salt in it, but whatever. Mm, still tastes like buttered popcorn. I'm still into it. Mmm. Mm. Why does it taste? exactly like buttered popcorn. I think it's the peanuts. Mm. So mm. good. Mm. This is so comforting. What I love about this is I feel like most Indian food is often accompanied by rice, but sometimes, you know, you don't just want plain old basmati rice. You want rice that's kind of dressed up and ready to go to a ready to go to a dance, ready to go to the prom. You know, you can riff on this endlessly with different herbs, different vegetables, different uh, nuts even. You could do walnuts, you can do pistachios. My mom has tried doing like pomegranate seeds and mint and pistachio and done a more like Middle Eastern take. But yeah, you can do this in so many different ways and people will kind of always be impressed by it when you serve it at a party. So it's a, a good one to have in your back pocket. Let's cook. It smells like an Herbal Essences commercial in here. Is anyone getting that? It smells like Herbal Essences. Is someone like... Are they taste? Are they smelling shampoo? Oh, yeah. My natural essence. Gabby's natural essence is an herbal essence. It's commercial. That makes sense. <laughs>